Hello Info Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss these super cute puppies. Puppies of a new hybrid of a dog. But the actual story is obviously just a little bit more complicated, because that company we've recently discussed, I guess, just desperately wants more attention. They're basically now claiming that they created dire wolves, like the ones in the Game of Thrones. Or to be more specific, their claim is that this is the first de-extinction ever. And it's a pretty strong claim, so obviously, since there is a lot of science involved, we have to discuss this on the channel. But just as a reminder, last time, that same company, Colossal Biosciences, introduced this into the world. This was the so-called woolly mice. Basically a mouse containing genes that the researchers from Colossal were claiming came from a mammoth. Now you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, but the point here was that they were essentially trying to find techniques to make the extinction possible. So yeah, I think your Jurassic Park, except that instead of dinosaurs, we start bringing back some of the megafauna that used to exist approximately 12 to 20,000 years ago. And so in this video, let's I guess talk about dire wolves and what we know about them. Let's talk about these super cute puppies, who by the way are not dire wolves, talk about the science behind this, but first let's actually start with the obvious. Let's discredit their claim right away. Even if these were dire wolves, this is not the first de-extinction attempt ever. Because that was attempted 22 years ago. And it was actually for this animal. Spanish Tur, Also known as Pyrenean Ibex. The animal that finally went extinct in January of 2000. Dying of natural causes and possibly heart attack may be the result of the dot-com crash because this gold right here invested everything. But on a more serious note, you can actually read about the first birth of an animal from an extinct subspecies in the study right here. Here, three years later, researchers actually succeeded. They brought back an extinct animal, but unfortunately in this case, it did not survive very long. When this goat was born, it had a major issue inside its lungs and only survived for seven minutes. And though this has never been attempted again, technically this was still the first ever de-extinct animal. But because Colossal Biosciences is a startup that's trying to basically raise billions, they do have to make quite a few um, extraordinary claims. But I guess let's just discuss the facts and ignore the actual announcements. And the fact number one is that they actually did extract DNA from two prehistoric dire wolves. This was from two different fossils, one discovered in Ohio from 13,000 years ago, although here this was just a tooth, and inner ear from Idaho from 72,000 years ago, which allowed them to create a partial DNA that was then sequenced and compared to different canine species. Here they tried to use different living relatives, including wolves, jackals, and foxes, and decided to settle for gray wolf. And here this is actually really important, because technically gray wolves and dire wolves are actually very, very different. And that's despite some similarities in terms of physical appearance, as you see in this image. On the left that's the gray wolf, on the right that's the dire wolf. So here they appear just a little bit bigger, their jaws are much stronger, and their teeth are really large as well. As a matter of fact, they had some of the largest teeth of all canines with an extremely powerful bite. Possibly strongest bite of all canine species. And this was very likely the adaptation entirely based on what they were hunting. And here we're talking about everything. They were basically preying on all of the mega herbivores. So in essence, everything you see right here. And though it's not entirely clear what they actually looked like, it's actually extremely likely that they were not white. And so the only reason they're white here is because in this case, these puppies were designed to be white. And my guess, it's really because of this. And so I think HBO possibly has a copyright on these wolves already. You can't just bring a character to life and assume it's yours. But anyway, back to the actual species. And while just like so many other megafauna existing during this period, all of them went extinct following the last glaciation period. So approximately 12,000 years ago, they all disappeared. And the actual reasons are still a mystery, but it's possible that the combination of the climate change, disappearance of other megafauna they used to hunt, and the arrival of humans eventually caused them to lose their apex predator status, with the last one potentially disappearing sometimes around 10,000 years ago. And I guess because there is so much mystery behind this, and because this is just such a cool animal, and also because wolves and dogs are very easy to come by, researchers from Colossal, the startup, decided to see if they can actually try to at least bring this back. But here they already made a grave mistake. They decided to select Grey Wolf as the egg donor. Or basically here they had to use an egg of something in order to create the baby, and they went for the Grey Wolf. 
This is despite a study from several years ago, which you can find right here and in the description below, that does an extremely thorough analysis and compares the genes between the species, discovering that these two species are not closely related at all. In other words, out of all of this, the most interesting scientific fact is that dire wolves were not wolves at all. Some of the first dire wolves seem to have appeared 6 million years ago, splitting from wolves around the same time and forming an entirely separate group or an entirely separate species. Also confirming that dire wolves evolved in complete isolation from other ancestors and there is no evidence for any gene flow between dire wolves, wolves, coyotes or any other canines. In other words, comparing a grey wolf to a dire wolf is about the same as comparing a human and a chimp. In terms of lineage timeline, this would be very similar. Which means that dire wolves were an entirely different species, possibly related to African jackal, which kind of looks like this. But because there was no gene flow between grey wolves and dire wolves, it means that by using a grey wolf egg, all they did here was produce a grey wolf, with maybe some unusual characteristics. And so far this seems to be exactly what they did. Based on the report, it looks like they basically took grey wolf's DNA and then using CRISPR method, modified 20 individual base pairs out of approximately 2.5 billion. This was done in 14 separate genes that researchers in the startup believed might be responsible for a certain appearance that might make these wolves resemble a dire wolf. What exactly what that means is of course not clear. And then they took the modified DNA inserted this into the grey wolf's egg, took this egg and actually implanted them into dogs. So basically the embryos were born of domestic dogs and not grey wolves. Although in this case the DNA was still wolf-like. And because dogs are basically descendants of grey wolves, this was not a big deal. And then you get this video. This is from early October 2024, when two first puppies, Romulus and Remus, were finally born. By now they're obviously much much older. And then on January 2025, there was another puppy named Khaleesi. And I can already see HBO lawyers just itching to get their fingers on all of this. And so just to summarize this, this was literally a PR stunt. Nothing less, nothing more. Because in essence, these are just puppies. Well, technically, grey wolf puppies that were modified to be slightly different looking, essentially making their coat white. And because in this case these puppies are also going to be raised by humans, they're going to be even entirely different from a typical wild wolf. So far the plan is to always keep them captive and to just raise them as wolves. And as a matter of fact, releasing them might actually be illegal. But here I guess one of the new questions would be, so are they going to be actually healthy? Are they going to survive long? And will they possibly develop similar problems to that first case with that goat I previously mentioned? Right now it's only been just over 6 months, so the results are not clear. But it would be interesting to come back and discuss this more in the future, assuming of course we hear a little bit more about them in years to come. Being able to sequence partial DNA and come up with certain modifications to change certain things and then to actually give birth to a living being that seems to be healthy is definitely not a small achievement. So in that sense I'm definitely impressed. And especially because these are just super cute. But just like every scientist said so far, these are nothing more but genetically modified wolves with 14 modified genes that makes them look just a little bit different. And everything else inside of them is basically wolf-like. But this is definitely not the extinction and these are definitely not dire wolves. A more appropriate term would be grey wolf hybrid. Which if you have any dog is basically the same. Because that's what dogs are in a nutshell. Although I think I will probably come back and discuss this particular startup in the future once they come up with some new over-exaggerated claim and some new the extinct animal they decide to bring back. Oh hey, here's a suggestion. Maybe a saber-toothed tiger. And that one is going to be really easy. You take a cat, a couple of plastic knives, done. And so on a more serious note, we'll talk about this in some of the future videos, we'll possibly also discuss some additional discoveries and additional attempts at the extinction, especially the ones involving mammoths. But until then, thank you for watching, check out previous videos in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who loves science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.